Hey everybody, I want to thank you again for tuning in to our daily devotionals, whether it's morning or evening to you, so good to have you along. Um, so I guess this is now week two of our lockdown situation. The school certainly anyway are off into their second week, which for me, that means I'm home with four women in the house plus a female cat. So I'm broadcasting to you today from the garage, from the man cave, just to get a wee bit of uh, respite from that. It feels like I'm in a bunker situation or something here, which is interesting because in the news the other night, that's exactly how some of the nurses described this whole situation that we find ourselves in. It's like a wartime situation. They said, it feels like we're going to war every day. You know, it got me thinking because it's an interesting notion as a nation in Northern Ireland, our history has been marked by division and hostility and even neighbours taking up different positions and different sides of a religious divide. And yet here we find ourselves united as a nation, united against a faceless enemy. And it got me thinking, you know, it's always kind of been like that. Um, because the greatest battles you or I will fight in our lives are against an enemy that we cannot see. Uh, the Apostle Paul puts it this way in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. He says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against spiritual forces and heavenly realms. In other words, he says, the most significant battles you and I will face in our life are not against an enemy with a face. It's against an enemy that we cannot see. Um, you know, way back when I was in my early teens, I remember um, my cousin had a quad. And this day we decided to race it up around the field. And I, had a fr I was driving the front, I had a friend on the back, and we, we drove it up around the top end of the field. The two front wheels lifted, and you, I don't know if you know one of those like stone cattle drinkers that you find in a hedge. So I plunged the quad straight into that stone cattle drinker. And so I ended up a bit bloody and bruised, had to go up to the doctors, lay in the uh, treatment room for an hour and a half or something like that while I got cleaned up a bit. And the doctor says, was anybody else involved? I said, yeah, my friend uh, was sitting in the back, but there's not a scratch on him. And to which uh, the doctor replied and says, well, tell him to come up here and get checked out because his wounds might be internal. His wounds might be internal. And then it struck me, and I reflected on it later, that the most significant wounds we will face in our lives that were inflicted on us in our lives are not always obvious. They're not ones that other people can see, but they cause us to bleed inside. They will kill our hopes, kill our dreams, kill our aspirations, kill our confidence, and kill our relationships. Killing us silently through internal bleeding. And you know, Jesus tells this parable of, in Matthew chapter 13. He tells a parable of a, a landowner. And in that parable, it says that while his servant slept, this enemy of his uh, crept into his wheat field, his barley field, and sowed weeds in. But it says, while men slept, these enemies crept in unnoticed. You see, we all have an unseen enemy, my friends. Um, there is an unseen enemy that's not physical like the coronavirus, but spiritual. And his goal is just to sow those seeds, sow those weeds into your life and into my life, just like he did into that harvest field, so that he can sabotage the fruitfulness of your life, to cause you to live smaller than God ever intended for you. Because I want you, and please catch this, the battle is for the fruitfulness of your life. And so he sows in tares, he sows in weeds, so that when your fruitfulness is hindered, other people go hungry. When your fruitfulness is hindered, other people will go hungry. And so what the enemy of our souls wants to do is infect us with unseen wounds, wounds that we don't even know we carry, that cause us to bleed internally, and ultimately they will kill the effectiveness of our lives. They will sabotage our ability to engage in relationships, to trust people, and to believe that God would set his affection on us or even be able to use any of us. And you know, just like this coronavirus, we've heard it in the news, you could be walking around infected, with an internal wound and not even realize it. And better still, not even realize that you're transmitting something to other people. You know, when I think about someone who looked like on the surface he had everything all together, he, he looked like, uh, for all intents and purposes, he had a great life. I think about King Saul back in the Old Testament. And in First uh, Samuel chapter 9 and verse 2, it says of Saul, he was a handsome young man. There was not a man among the people of Israel any more handsome than he was. From his shoulders upwards, he was taller than any of the people. So there you have it, tall, dark, and handsome, and about to become the king of Israel. He had it going. Men wanted to be him. Women wanted to be with him. And yet underneath the surface, 
of this guy that supposedly had it all together, there is this infection. He has an infection, not a physical infection like the coronavirus, but an insecurity infection. And when you look at his life, and when I study his life, I see three, at least three times when Saul very decidedly uh, surrenders and makes poor decisions based on public opinion. You see, he had this insatiable need to be liked, this insatiable need to be able to fit in. And so he couldn't commit to anything because he had this fear, uh, as, if you like, as Katy Perry put it, he stood for nothing, so he fell for everything. And so he couldn't be obedient to God and to the plan of God because he lived for the applause of men. And so Saul had all this stuff going on on the outside, but he had this void. He had this emptiness. He had this internal wound that nobody else could see. It lurked beneath the surface. It was an unseen enemy. I'll tell you again, friends, the biggest enemy you will ever face in your life is not an enemy you can see. It's an unseen enemy. But the problem is that eventually, just even like any virus or any infection, a, a, a private or an invisible illness will eventually produce public symptoms. It will eventually produce pub public symptoms. And Saul would often drive out and lash out. There's one young man in particular called David. And Saul would l lash out at him, throw a spear at him and drive him away. And so what happened was, in his insecurity, Saul would push away the very people that God had placed in his life in order to bless him. And that's what we do when we're insecure, when we, when we struggle to trust people, when, we're, when we've, we've, we've been hurt in the past, when we've been rejected in the past. The enemy sows these unseen wounds into our spirits, into our emotions, and we start to keep people at arm's length. We shy away from relationships. We keep people distant, and our lives become smaller because of it. You see, that's why these unseen enemies and internal wounds are so significant. Uh, I often say that God is our need meter. He's the ultimate need meter. But he often puts what we need in other people. And so if the enemy can sabotage our ability to do relationships, then he can short circuit our blessings. He can sabotage our relationships. He will short circuit our blessings. How does he do it? He does it with unseen wounds. Infections that you don't even know that you carry. Um, do you know what I find tragic as I read Saul's story in 1 Samuel? It says that Saul, we, we know that Saul spent his life fighting battles. He, he felt, spent his life fighting enemies of Israel. He fought the Philistines, the Amalekites, fighting armies. All his life he spent in the battlefield. And yet ultimately, it wasn't a sword that killed Saul. It wasn't a Philistine sword. It was the enemy that he couldn't see that brought about his demise. The enemy of insecurity. That was the one that robbed Saul, ultimately, of the life that he could have had. Do you know what? He was the tallest man in Israel, yet he spent his life running afraid. Afraid of other people who would think, afraid of failure, of living at the mercy of other people's likes, followbacks, and opinions. And I wonder how many of us uh, could say that we're in the same boat today. In fact, the day that Saul was to be appointed king of Israel, he was actually found hiding in among the equipment. Why? Because he said to the prophet Samuel, do you know what? I'm the least in my father's house. My tribe in Israel are, are, are the smallest. Why would, you, why would you want to make me king? And Saul became so convinced that where he came from was a barrier to where he could go to. Where he came from would compromise where God was taking him. And so Saul felt inadequate. He had this insecurity. He was scared to feel and he felt inadequate. And when you feel inadequate, my friend, it will cause you to live afraid and push away people that God intended to bless you. Let me set it out for you this way. Fear in our lives will establish the boundaries of our lives. In other words, if you think about this, somebody that's afraid of heights will always stay on the ground. Somebody that's afraid of crowds will isolate themselves. See, the fear that you have, fear will establish the boundaries of our lives. It will cause us to live much smaller than God intended for us. And so you ask me today, Philip, what's the antidote for that fear? I feel fear at the minute. I feel insecure at the minute. I feel all these things, vulnerable, reject all these things. What's the antidote to that? Do you know, here it is. Jesus gives it to his disciples in Matthew chapter 10. And it's interesting because you would think that the opposite and the antidote to fear is courage, but it's really not. And here's what he says in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 29. He says, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are numbered. Fear not, therefore, for you are of much more value 
than many sparrows. And so Jesus is telling us that the antidote to fear, even in a time like this, and the antidote to fear, the antidote to insecurity and vulnerability is not courage. Jesus is telling us that the antidote to fear is understanding your value. Understanding your value. You see, Saul could not grasp that he was worthy of where God wanted to take him. And many of us are like that as well. But let me set this out for you really simply. Two ways that you can determine your value. If that's something you struggle with, you struggle with the whole idea of insecurity and fear and self-worth, let me give you two quick ways you can determine your value. Number one, who, who you belong to. If you think about this, if I sold, I don't know, um, my bike and Donald Trump sold his and we both put them on eBay, whose do you think is going to fetch more money? And I can tell you it won't be mine because he's famous, he's well known and because, because of that factor of who it belongs to, the bike's worth much more money. Same thing applies to us. We're all created in the image of God and so God's image is on you, his stamp's on you, you belong to him and so that makes you of intrinsic value today. The second thing that determines value is how much someone's willing to pay. You know, friends, I could think that my house is worth X number of pounds, but if somebody's not willing to pay that, then it's not worth that. And here's what you need to look at. You need to look, and I encourage you, day and daily, especially in a time like this, look to the cross of Jesus Christ. Look at how he, the Son of God, emptied himself of all his divine attributes, came, took a form of a servant, died on a cross for you and me, poured out his life, poured out his life, and gave everything that he had to secure you and to secure your eternity if you would put your trust in him. Do you know what? I think that's absolutely amazing. If you ever question someday, am I loved? Am I worth anything? Am I valuable? Do you know what? You just take a look at the cross of Jesus Christ and absolutely all that he gave for you. Do you know what? It's like that old L'Oreal advert they used to have on the TV, because you're worth it. And so I want to just remind you of that today. I want to remind you that no matter where you find yourself, if you're battling fear, if you're battling insecurity, all those wounds, People may look on and say, yeah, great job, doing well, or, or, or pile of friends. Do you know what? My friend, you could be married and still feel alone. You can have, um, walk about with your, your back straight, head up on a great job, and still go home and, and, and be afraid and, and face every day afraid. And do you know what? Jesus has came to be a cure for that. And so here's my prayer for you today. As we talk about this coronavirus and we talk about an unseen enemy, I just want you to remember that the most significant battles we face in life are battles against an enemy we cannot see. The most, the deepest and most, uh, most sapping wounds that we have in our life that cause us to ultimately that will sabotage our destiny are wounds that are internal and wounds that you cannot see. And so I just pray today that God would permeate your mind with that understanding that you are so valuable that he sent his son. First of all, you're made in his image. And second of all, he sent his son to be a ransom, to give his life so that you could have eternal life and be adopted into his family. That's the most amazing thing, that God would set his affection in us and want to adopt us into his family. And so I just pray right now that God would impart that revelation to you today. He would bury it deep in your heart, however you feel today. Maybe you're afraid, insecure, feeling rejected, whatever it is, I pray that God would bury that revelation deep in your heart today, that you're worth more than many sparrows, that your hairs in your head are numbered, and that he gave his life for you. So I just want to leave you with that thought. Have a really great day, folks. God bless you and see you again tomorrow.